Hello wonderful people, welcome back, welcome home. I hope you enjoyed that hike. That is, in my opinion, the best hike in Connecticut. It is just so much fun, it has so many different things. It's got rock scrambles, it's got rivers, it's got waterfalls, it's got muddy spots, it's got streams, it's got beautiful woods, it's got animals, it's got views. It just has everything you're looking for in a hike in Connecticut, which is pretty rare to find all of those things. So I've been hiking for quite a while, hiking all around the world in some amazing places. And when I first moved to Connecticut, it wasn't really what I was looking for. It just didn't really compare to Cape Town, South Africa or some of the places I had traveled before. So I was a bit disappointed with the hiking around here. But when I found Sleeping Giant, especially the blue trail that then leads on to hiking the rest of the Sleeping Giants and doing a full loop around, I found the fun in hiking in Connecticut again. So Sleeping Giants is located in Hamden, Connecticut, which is just outside of New Haven. It's a nice, quick and easy drive if you are in New Haven. And it's super easy to get to right next to Quinnipiac University as well. So I did this hike on the 30th of January, right in the middle of winter. This year, it hasn't been as cold as previous years. We had a really cold spell last week, so it was super icy, but we had a couple days where all the snow and ice started to melt. So the trail wasn't that bad at all. It was a little muddy and wet in some spots, but really nothing that I couldn't handle. The main thing is that there was no ice. If there is ice on this trail, you definitely will have more of a struggle. As you saw in the actual hiking part of the video, there was a lot of rock scrambling, a lot of climbing. And so if there's ice on that, that would be very difficult. I did actually wait a couple days to do this hike because there was ice. So just keep that in mind if you are planning to do this. In terms of the difficulty of the hike, I wouldn't say that it is very difficult. It's rated hard on all trails, which I don't know, maybe I'm just, uh, I know I am more fit than the average person, but like if you compare this to a hard hike in Colorado or anywhere on the West Coast, this really isn't that difficult. And I would actually say that if you're a beginner hiker and you're looking to get into some more long distance hiking, this is a really great in-between. It took me about four hours to do eight miles and that was with filming at the same time. So you can take it nice and slow. It's obviously not a multi-day hike. So if you start nice and early in the morning, especially if it's spring or summer or fall, then you'll have the whole day to do it. It's such a beautiful hike. I've done it countless times in summer as well, where the woods is in full bloom and it's just, oh, it's so beautiful. So to just get lost out there all day is so amazing. And once you go up that initial climb, it really isn't too difficult. It flattens out along the top for the most part. Um, there is some up and downs and some more little scrambles, but it's, it's nothing crazy. And then on the backside, you actually descend very easily and then loop around. And then the loop is pretty much just a straight shot of almost the same altitude the whole way. In terms of weather and clothing, it was, I think, two degrees celsius which is like 38 or 39 or something but i think when i started it was a bit cold it was closer to freezing so i put packed a bunch of layers which once i started moving and climbing i <laughs> like stripped off almost all the layers so i just had an under armor on underneath this i just have a t-shirt on right now but i had an under armor on just like a base layer and then i literally just had this r1 patagonia um fleece layer and then i had a uh, down jacket as well that I took off in like five minutes of hiking um, and I also brought a rain jacket in case as well but I didn't need any of those other layers so I was mostly just in this the whole hike as you saw um, I brought gloves as well because my hands got cold in the beginning it was much colder next to the river than on the other side of the mountain where it was a lot more protected by the wind and then obviously I had my beanie on as well I also had a layer of legging tights on under my pants as well so I was pretty toasty the whole hike and very comfortable in terms of shoes I just had trail running shoes on. I don't think it's necessary to have hiking boots for this hike. I don't think it's necessary to have hiking boots for most hikes, especially this where it's a day hike and you aren't carrying that much weight on your pack. It's pretty easy and I'd rather go for more comfort and freedom of movements, especially when doing a kind of hike like this where it does involve a bit more climbing. For food, I, <laughs> I brought a banana. I brought three, what do you call this? Call it a nachi in South Africa. Is it a mandarin? <laughs> It is indeed a mandarin, I went to go check. <laughs> so I brought a banana, I brought three mandarins, and I brought a pear. And 
that was enough food for me. I ate a good breakfast before I left, so I was pretty well stocked and fueled up for the hike. And the fruits that I brought were more than enough. I brought uh, one liter of water and then I brought a hydro flask of tea as well. And I actually didn't even drink the water. I just drank all of my tea during the hike. So if it's colder, obviously you don't need as much water because you aren't feeling the effects of the, the heat as much. But if it's hot and sunny, I would definitely say bring at least a liter of water, if not two, because it can get pretty hot on the top as well. In terms of other people and animals, I saw only two people on the trail that day. Granted, it was a Tuesday in the middle of winter, so there aren't gonna be that many people out hiking anyway. In the summer, it does get a lot busier, um, but I think the park is big enough where you can still feel like you have your own space and your own freedom and yeah, it's just, it's a lovely place to go hiking. When it comes to animals, I saw crows, I saw squirrels, I saw some chipmunks, I saw a deer, and then this one time I was walking, one of the two people that I saw had a dog with her, and this dog just came bolting out of the woods like from behind me, and I got such a fright. I thought it was just like some rabid wild animal about it hunt me down. Cause it was, just imagine a dog in full sprint coming out of the bushes. Uh, that was scary. But as soon as I realized it had a co collar on and then I saw the owner, I was like, okay, it's, it's all good, but that was funny. Um, and then like probably two minutes later, I saw a white tailed deer as well, like, I don't know, 10 meters in front of me and so beautiful. I think I actually caught the deer a little bit off guard. So it was reversed in this situation. Um, but yeah, just so nice to be out there, so peaceful. Such a nice escape from the rest of Connecticut, the, the very suburban Boston Post Road lifestyle of Connecticut. And then lastly, what I wish I knew before doing this hike, nothing too much. The biggest thing is that I wish that I didn't pack my fruits in the front pocket of my bag because my banana got squished and my pear got squished. I still ate them, but it just, they got bruised and battered and became a little bit mushy, so it wasn't the best. So if you're packing fruits, make sure to put them in more of a hard container or just put them in a different part of your bag. Um, I'm sure mine got squished more just because I was constantly putting my bag down and picking it up to use my camera gear, so. Um, yeah, all in all, a very fun hike in Connecticut. If you are in the area, or even if you're like half an hour, 45 minutes away, it's definitely worth the trip, especially when the weather starts getting a bit warmer. I hope this video helps. If it did, please share it with your friends that also might like to do this hike and subscribe for more hiking guides and tips. I'll leave the link to my all trails down in the description as well so you can see this hike and the route that I did. I kind of did a combination of different routes. I started on the blue and then just went my own way basically and made up my own loop. So that'll be down there. If you want, you can also join the channel for behind the scenes and exclusive updates as well. And on that note, I just wanna give a massive shout out to my channel members so far. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the support. Um, every one of you helps me to keep making videos like this, so I can't thank you enough. Lastly, let me know if you have any questions or anything else you would like to know or see. Just leave it all down in the comments below. All right, I hope to see you out on the trail. Bye guys.